As the movie begins, we see a secluded house in the hills of Colorado. We are then introduced to the owner of the house, Ray, who is a former hockey player. He receives a phone call from his girlfriend, Ashley, during which they talk about the high school reunion they've discussed a few days ago. Ashley is really excited about this, but Ray does not seem to be interested and thinks that this is not a good idea. Moments later, Ashley arrives at the house, but Ray is nowhere to be seen. Upon strolling around, she notices pictures of her high school friends on the wall, with a text that describes what their life would have been like. It's not clear what these descriptions mean at this point, so Ashley decides to search for Ray instead. Soon, she discovers several messages scattered around the house and suspects Ray may be teasing her. But eventually, Ashley begins to get threatening messages and notices that her picture is crossed with red paint. Terrified of this, she immediately runs out of the house, when someone suddenly appears behind her and drags her into a shed. In the next scene, a woman named Gabby, who is also a famous poker player arrives at the house for the reunion. She is greeted by Ray's housekeeper, Tarkin, but she is somewhat creeped out to see him there, as Tarkin used to be their alcohol dealer in high school. However, Gabby brushes it off and goes inside the house, where she discovers her picture hung on the wall along with her friends. But, she is disturbed to discover Ashley's face crossed out with red paint. And when Gabby sees the picture of her ex-boyfriend, Brad, she immediately regrets her decision to come here. Since Gabby had no idea Brad was also invited, she gets ready to leave. But just then, one of her friends, Jade shows up and convinces her to stay for the party. Later, other friends including Freddy, Jade, DJ, Lamont, and Simone arrive at the house, and they all gather around while reminiscing about their high school days. Then, the group starts looking through the yearbook and notices a boy called John Doherty. Apparently, in high school, they all pulled a terrible prank on him by crossing out his picture from the yearbook and writing, most likely to die, underneath it. And a few days after that, John was expelled and taken to juvenile hall after being discovered in his locker with a gun. Recalling these events, the group now feels bad about that time and admits that they shouldn't have pulled such a terrible prank. Meanwhile, Brad, who is now a famous actor arrives at the house with his model girlfriend, Bella. Gabby becomes upset when she sees them and goes to the balcony. And seeing this, Jade follows her friend and convinces her to forget about the past and enjoy the moment. It turns out that Brad abandoned Gabby when she became pregnant with his child in high school. Therefore, she still bears a grudge against him and refuses to forgive him. In the next scene, the group is seen relaxing in the pool, but even after all this time, Ray and his girlfriend, Ashley is still missing. On the other hand, when Brad goes inside, he notices Gabby trying to fix a table. And when he offers to help her, Gabby instantly declines. Realizing his past mistakes, Brad apologizes to her and asks her for a second chance to rekindle their relationship, but Gabby refuses him in a heartbeat and walks away. Elsewhere, Bella is changing her clothes and Tarkin creepily stares at her. But all of a sudden, he is strangled to death by a figure wearing a graduation outfit. Meanwhile, Lamont and Simone are by themselves in the swimming pool, where Simone compliments him by saying he has been quite attractive since high school. She also reveals that she was married a few years ago, but is divorced now. Then, Lamont confesses by saying he had a crush on her in high school, but since Simone was the class president, he was afraid to talk to her. Hearing this, Simone seductively kisses him and invites him to meet her in the upstairs bedroom. On the other hand, the rest of the group is having fun playing poker. But moments later, tension arises between Gabby and Brad while playing the game, so she purposefully loses and lets Brad win. Irritated with her ex's behavior, Gabby steps outside to look for Ray and Ashley, who still haven't shown up. Brad also follows her and asks why she deliberately let him win the poker game. However, Gabby denies doing so and claims that he is the winner. Then, Brad tells her that his girlfriend, Bella is organizing a poker charity event and invites Gabby to participate to entice more people. But Gabby becomes enraged hearing this and berates him for being a selfish person who only looks out for himself. 
She reminds Brad of how he abandoned her in high school when she was pregnant and fled away to pursue his dreams. Gabby has no business talking to him, so she furiously walks forward and finds a shed in the distance. And when she goes inside, she is horrified to see Ashley's lifeless body covered in lights. Gabby immediately screams in terror, and when Freddy arrives with his camera, he is also terrified to see Ashley dead. On the other hand, while Simone and Lamont are having an intimate moment, DJ enters their room in a panic and tells them about Ashley. Then, Lamont leaves with DJ to investigate the situation, while Simone remains at the house. The gang gathers in front of the shed, wondering who could have done such a thing. As they discuss the possibilities, they assume that Ray must have done this, because even though he is the host, Ray has not shown up since they arrived. Next, Brad switches off the lights that were covering Ashley's body, but at the same time, the lights in the house also go out. At this point, Simone is inside the house all alone. She then hears a weird noise in the distance and goes to investigate. But suddenly, the killer appears and murders her with the graduation cap. Later, while heading toward the police station, Lamont's car abruptly stops. And when he checks what might have happened, Lamont discovers that someone had cut the fuel pipe, causing all of his petrol to leak out. Meanwhile, Gabby is standing outside the shed processing the traumatic scene they just witnessed. Just then, DJ approaches her and tells her that she's a strong woman who has been through a lot in her life. But Gabby is surprised to hear this sudden compliment from him. And when she asks DJ not to give her fake praises, he responds that what he's saying is true. When Brad left her to pursue his ambitions, Gabby handled herself well and worked hard to become the woman she is today. Furthermore, DJ informs her that the two of them are quite similar since they have both experienced betrayal from others all their lives. Just then, Brad arrives and turns on the shed lights, revealing that someone has murdered Simone as well. When they get to the house, they discover Simone's body floating in the hot tub. It turns out that the murderer is on a killing spree, and is crossing the victim's photo with red paint after they're dead. The group also realizes that the killer is coming after them based on what they were voted most likely to do in their high school yearbooks. After that, they immediately run to their cars to escape, only to discover that all of their cars are wrecked. Since they are out in the middle of nowhere, the group returns back to the house and decides to stay close together. They speculate that this must be Ray's doing and that he must have gone insane after being dismissed from his hockey team. Later, when Jade and Gabby are alone, she tells the latter that Ray cannot do such a thing because she used to visit him frequently, and even vouches for his innocence. Then, she takes Gabby to show her a gun that Ray told her about. Jade tells her to only use the gun in an emergency and not to share it with anybody else, because at this point, they cannot trust anyone. In the next scene, Gabby goes to the restroom to freshen up, and when she uses the hand wash, she sees blood coming from it. Gabby loses her mind after seeing this and immediately rushes outside while screaming. Now, the group speculates on whether someone is playing a prank on them, while Bella thinks that the whole thing is a hoax. She then decides to leave the house and investigate whether Ashley and Simone are really dead. Bella invites Brad to accompany her, but when he declines her invitation, DJ decides to join her to give her company. Moments later, they hear a phone ringing in the house. But since none of them have signals on their cell phones, they are taken aback. When Brad answers the phone, the killer from the other side responds that Brad did not sign his yearbook. Suddenly, the killer appears behind Brad and stabs him, but just then, Gabby appears with the gun and points it at him. Seeing this, the killer gets scared and goes outside, while the group brings the injured Brad into the room. After that, Brad apologizes to Gabby for his past mistakes and claims that he should have been with her. In response, Gabby also forgives him and tells him not to give up, as he will be fine soon. And just as they feel a little better, Bella bursts into the room and claims that someone has just attacked DJ and is now after her. Before she could say anything further, the killer appears out of nowhere and tosses his hat at Bella, slashing her neck. Horrified by this, Gabby rushes to escape, but the killer follows after her. As she moves forward, 
Gabby notices that the door in front of her is locked and that the killer is close to her. But before he can do any harm, Jade appears and shoots at the killer, causing him to flee. Then, Gabby takes the gun from Jade and says that she will go after the murderer and kill him. She goes upstairs to seek the killer, and when she finds him, she shoots him viciously. However, it turns out to be only a reflection, and Jade is actually shot on the opposite side of the mirror. Gabby is horrified when she realizes that she has killed her own friend. And as she hugs and apologizes to Jade, the killer appears behind her, but for some reason, he does not strike her. On the other hand, Lamont loses his way while walking through the desert and finds an unconscious DJ. When he wakes him up, DJ claims that Ray was the one who attacked him. And when Lamont tries to help him out, DJ slashes his forehead with a utility blade. He then forces Lamont to eat a hockey stick, before finally slitting his neck. Moments later, DJ enters the house with Ray tied up in a graduation costume and reveals himself to be the killer. When Gabby wonders why he is doing this, DJ admits that they were childhood friends with John, but when they got to high school, they started playing nasty pranks on him. DJ reveals that he resumed his friendship with John some years later, but he found out that the latter never graduated. And because of his juvenile record, he never even got a job. John couldn't take the failure any longer and ended up taking his own life. Therefore, DJ now intends to murder all of his other friends in revenge for destroying John's life. And as he commits these crimes, he intends to blame Ray for the murders. Next, DJ offers to let go of Gabby and Freddy if they help him murder the rest of their class at the reunion the next day. With no other choice, the two succumb to the pressure and agree to help him. However, DJ is suspicious of Gabby, so he asks her to prove her faithfulness. He hands her a paper cutter and tells her to kill Brad, reminding her of how much he has hurt her in the past. Gabby then makes the paper cutter shorter and kisses Brad, saying that she now forgives him. Then, she stabs Brad without injuring him, and upon seeing this, DJ is finally convinced that she is on his side. Then, having earned the DJ's trust, Gabby asks him for a gun to shoot Brad dead. Without much thought, he hands her a gun, but Gabby flips the script and ends up shooting DJ instead. She then releases Ray from the trap, and once he's free, Ray pours his anger by shooting DJ multiple times. After that, they take the injured Brad and finally leave the house. As the film ends, the killer dressed in a graduation robe enters the house. He picks up the mask from DJ's dead body and places it on his face. Then, he paints the red cross over DJ's face, revealing that DJ was not the actual killer, but was only helping him. That is it for today's recap. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and check out the other videos from our channel.